So what happened here? How did it happen and why did it happen? Today we're going to talk about Suzugamori Keijo. The Edo period of Japan is romanticized by historians as a time of economic growth and peace. They'd come out of the Sengoku Jidai, the Warring States period. Japan was basically shut off from the rest of the world, isolated, but art and culture were allowed to flourish. Things like ukiyo-e and kabuki were born at this time. But it was also a very dark period in Japan's history that not very many people, even Japanese, know about. And Suzugamori played a big part in that. It was established in 1651 and operated until 1871. Now Keijo means execution grounds. It's estimated that between 100,000 and 200,000 people were executed here during that time. So how was this carried out? How were the sentences carried out? Well, there was boiling to death, there was decapitation if you were lucky, and uh, you saw the well there at Suzugamori. Um, that well has been covered up because they used to use that. And on the Japanese sign, it says they used it to wash the necks of the people who were decapitated. Actually, neck and head in Japanese, the word is kubi. Uh, when a person is, well, there's no other way to say it, but when a person gets decapitated, they, the Japanese say they have no neck, which is true. I mean, their neck has been cut, their head has been cut off, but they will say kubi ga nai. And when somebody gets fired, they say kubi ni naru. So um, on the little sign there, it says that they use the well to wash the necks of the decapitated. What they really did was they use it to wash the heads of the decapitated. So um, they've covered it up with a mesh wiring, almost like uh, chicken wire to, believe it or not, prevent copycats. But probably the most terrifying was what they call suitaku. And that's where a person, uh, see this used to be Tokyo Bay before it all became reclaimed land. But the condemned was placed, suspended upside down on a pole in the water. And when the tide came in, they would drown. First person thought to be executed here was Murabashi Chuya. He led an uprising against the Tokugawa Shogunate in 1651. It was called the Keon Uprising. Probably the most tragic story is that of Yaoya Oshichi. Now, she was a 16-year-old girl who fell in love with a man who worked at the local temple. And she thought that if she set the temple on fire, that he would have to come out and she'd be able to meet him. Now, things didn't go as planned and she was quickly arrested. Now, in the criminal justice system in Japan at the time, a 16-year-old could be tried as an adult and sentenced to death if they're convicted. Now, she was 16 years old and the magistrate kept asking her, almost pleading with her, to claim to be 15 years old, knowing that if she were tried as an adult and she'd most likely be convicted, that she could be put to death. Well, in her childish, foolish honesty, she kept insisting she was 16 years old. Now, at the time, there was really no reliable system for recording births. So she could have easily claimed to be 15. Nobody would have been none the wiser. And it would have been a much different story, but the magistrate had really no choice and he sentenced her to death. And her stories become the subject of many books and plays and uh, sometimes told accurately, sometimes not. But the truth is, it's just heartbreaking. When you see a 16-year-old kid in Japan today, and now I know times are much different than the Edo period, but you see a 16-year-old kid, especially a little girl going to school, and you know, I, I consider them basically just children. And um, you know, they're concerned about the latest game, which pop idol they have a crush on. Um, you know, where's the best bubble tea and crepes in Harajuku? Uh, they're just kids. And I know during the Edo period, life was much different. I mean, they probably worked. They probably were supporting their family. They were probably getting ready to get married at the time. So yeah, things are a little bit different, but uh, still, executing a 16-year-old child is just heartbreaking. So why this place? Why Suzugamori? Uh, well, it was, they chose a place on the outskirts of Tokyo. See, they didn't want the spirits or the souls of the condemned or the executed to wander around the city. They 
were basically doing what they call preventing spiritual pollution of the city. Another reason is this is the entrance to the city along the Tokaido, which means the Eastern Sea Road. And the Tokaido was the major route between Kyoto and Tokyo during the Edo period. This was the entrance to the city of Edo, which is the old name for Tokyo. Now, most travel was done on foot if you were a commoner at the time. And there was no way around just walking through the grisly display of dismembered and decapitated bodies, reminding people entering Tokyo that the government would not allow, the government would not tolerate crime. They would not tolerate political uprisings. And believe it or not, at the time, you could even be sentenced to death for being Christian. Now, these are just rumors for what it's worth, but uh, residents in this area say that there are more traffic accidents on this road than other roads in Tokyo. And people who don't even know that the, people who don't even know the execution ground is here say they, they've had an unexplained chill when coming by here by train or by car. I've always thought I was really sensitive to uh, ghosts and spirits and things like that. And, Honestly, nothing really out of the ordinary happened here, but I mean, I didn't get any strange feelings or goosebumps or anything, but two kind of unexpected things did happen and for what it's worth. Uh, I was just reading the script here about Suzugamori and right when I read the word execution, there was a young woman walking past me and her dog started barking at me. And uh, yeah, that happens all the time. Maybe it's nothing but it was right when I read the word executed off the paper. And this is Japan, I was reading English, you know, just maybe that energy out there, it's not a good thing. And another thing is I was, was walking back from the park on the way to the station and uh, saw two police buses. They're usually carrying prisoners and that's a little bit weird. I mean, sure, I mean, they probably do that every day. Maybe they're just, you know, petty criminals on the way to court or on the way back since it's the afternoon, but, um, just another coincidence that made me think uh, that there's maybe something about this place. Namidabashi, meaning Bridge of Tears, got its name because the condemned criminals were forced to march across this bridge on the way to their execution. And that was part of the process of execution. The condemned were paraded around in public as a reminder that the government would not tolerate crime, uprisings, or even Christianity. So this is where it gets a little weird. Um, you know, I'm not one to spread wild rumors on the internet. You know, I don't want to spread gossip about Japan that's not true. Uh, you know, you can check things on the internet. You can find anything you're looking for. But uh, the best way is to ask a local. So I was near Suzugamori Keijo, and I asked a local where I could find the Bridge of Tears. And I called it Namida Bashi, which is what it's called in all the websites that talk about this area. And uh, after a little searching, you know, I showed him, I, I looked on my map and on my phone and I couldn't find it. And he said, oh yeah, it's, it's now called Hamakawabashi. So if you're looking for that, I'll put a link in the description to these places I'm talking about so you don't have to go search them out yourself. But I said, you know, while I have you here, could you, you know, kind of confirm something for me? Because like I said, I don't want to spread wild rumors about Tokyo or Japan. And I said, is it true that there are more accidents along this street than other streets in Tokyo, and he just kind of chuckled. He said, nah, that's just, that's just gossip. I mean, that's, that's not true at all. And he turned around and walked away, and he turned around real quick and said, but there are ghosts, especially in the summer. That interaction was particularly interesting to me because I had shut my camera off, and I put the microphone in my pocket, this, this microphone right here, I put it in my pocket and shut it off, and it, spontaneously turned on to record that conversation and I've 
I put that in this video. It's kind of hard to hear because, like I said, the microphone's in my pocket, but the fact that it turned on to spontaneously record that part of the conversation kind of freaked me out when I heard it. Um, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Another weird thing that happened, I, I got to the Bridge of Tears and I set up my camera and my microphone and checked. There's a little thing on the microphone, and this has never given me problems, by the way. The weird thing is I, w I was checking the microphone, the receiver, and the LEDs moving up and down telling me it's receiving audio. And I get home and I was, it's right at the point on the Bridge of Tears where I was talking about what it must have been like to walk across that bridge for those condemned. Excuse me. And I got to the point where I was talking about what it must have been like for the condemned people to walk across the Bridge of Tears. And how it must have felt, you know, knowing that you're going to die. And my microphone just stopped working. But it just didn't record that part. So um, maybe there is something about this place. I don't know. Now I know it's hard to believe that a place like Japan that's so peaceful, known for anime, cosplay, manga, could have such a harsh system at one time. And things have got a lot better over the last 400 years, especially for Christians. You can see Christian churches around Tokyo. You know, they still have a 99% conviction rate. And if you want to know more about that, I've got a video you can watch right here. But if you had enough of the depressing, the dark stuff, and you want to see something a little more cheerful, uplifting, I got some videos about cherry blossom. You can check out that playlist right here. Thanks.